So we've gotten into, uh, we, we did a documentary um, entitled How to Love Your Enemy, and, and we discovered this very cool restorative justice project in Longmont, Colorado. Um, it's the Longmont, uh, I always butcher this acronym, what is it? Longmont Long Community Justice Partnership, Kath CJP. Kathleen's going to be so mad at me. The Longmont Community Justice Partnership. And they've they've found a way, and and I they they focus on young people, you know, people that make a really big mistake at a critical juncture in their life, where they could go into the criminal justice system, and they could deny responsibility for what they did, and they could end up in jail, and then they could go through the cycle of of recidivism and and end up a violent criminal. Um, but they they found a way to basically um, do a community based alternative to that where they, they deal with what I think is a very libertarian idea of, of making the victim whole. We always talk about making society whole. Well, society wasn't hurt. The victim was hurt. And I think that that's sort of a, a, a beautiful opportunity to, to bring people together across the political spectrum that are looking for a way to deal with this that doesn't involve Washington, D.C. Because I'd, I, there are so few people in Washington, D.C. that actually want to fix this problem. They just want a message and demagogue. Um, Justin Amash points this out all the time. Um, what do you, have you dug into restorative justice at all? Yeah, and Conservatives Concern is actually a project of a larger organization called Equal Justice USA that is doing a lot of that type of practitioner level work in the communities. And so I've gotten to witness it and, and learn from a lot of the people working on our staff about it. Restorative justice as a concept is so exciting to me because I think you're exactly right. It is what the victims, what their family members are asking for. And it's not a big government solution. I think this is something conservatives and libertarians should really get on board board with. It's local, it's community driven, it's public private partnerships. It's not a one size fits all approach. Um, it really is working with people to customize plans and figure out, you know, what do you need? If you're a victim of crime, do you need to go in and out of a courtroom for a decade to see if this person is going to get the death penalty or do you need therapy? Do you need help relocating if you're in a dangerous position? Do you need assistance with childcare if you've lost a spouse or if you've lost an, an income provider? You know, all of these things that people actually need to just get get through the first hurdle of surviving crime. And then what do you need? Do you need to have restitution paid to you? Do you need to sit down with the offender and talk with them? You know, you'll find that a lot of people actually want to have that sort of real healing connection of sitting down and figuring out why did you do this? And, you know, trying to work through that, getting an apology from them, whatever it is that person needs, it's very customizable. And I think that's fascinating. We also see a lot of work being done with law enforcement in that regard and really trying to come in and work with them on trauma-informed responses to violence and not just on how they're interacting with people and understanding people in the community's trauma and how that might um, change how they interact with policing, but also to understand their own trauma. You know, I think so often uh, we can get, I know even I can get a little bit uh, angry at cops or angry at the profession and how it works, but we, we forget that oftentimes they are victims of crime too and what that does to them in their capacity respond and how they interact with people. And so I love all of that work. I think it's something that's still really new to a lot of people on the right. Um, but there's other things like cure violence and, and things that are even working with gang members where they're bringing in people who are rival gangs in Oakland. And um, Newark is a really good example in Baton Rouge that have had these really high crime areas and trying to find ways to actually get those people um, attached to services that are already being offered, job placement, educational services, things that we know will actually prevent ongoing criminality. And and to try to lessen tensions in, the, in that regard. So I think it's, it's fascinating to observe. I just hope I get to keep learning and witnessing it. Yeah.